I'm Chad Colby, the host of Trackside. Trackside is the official program of the United States Cross Country National Guard Snowmobile Championship. Good morning, I'm Chad Colby from Trackside. We're getting ready for day two of the Red Lake I-500. Day one was a huge success. A lot of snow in the Thief River area. So we didn't have the attrition we normally do. We lost 16 riders today. We'll have 120 riders take the green flag today at the Red Lake I-500. Behind us, snowmobiles are getting ready and staging right now for 170 miles of cross-country racing. 21 below zero here at the Seven Clans Casino. The riders will leave here, go out about 60 miles to a fuel stop, make a 60 mile loop back to there, grab fuel again, and come back here and complete day two of the 500. Today's course, a mixture of ditch running, a lot of rivers. We're actually going to ride the river through Thief River Falls, Minnesota, which is always a highlight for the racers. We're looking forward to day number two at the Red Lake I-500. There's some unique rules to the I-500. The most important is you can only take with you what's on the snowmobile. You can't get any assistance. We look at this rider's pro snowmobile, you're gonna look at the back and see he's got two belts right here and a custom made toolkit. He can only fix with what tools and parts he has on the snowmobile. One other thing real important in sub-zero temperatures, it's 21 below today, and that's hand protection. We had a lot of guys that had some issues with frostbite yesterday. This rider here, as you'll see, he's got obviously hand mitts on his snowmobile. They've got hand warmers as well, and it's a must-have in these kind of conditions. The other thing that's very important on a long cross-country race, believe it or not, is the window. The window of your snowmobile is a huge factor. If you would have an off off your snowmobile and damage this window, that extra air all day long could cause some problems, obviously due to the extreme temperatures. We're 21 below in Thief River Falls this morning. You know, again, we talk about cold weather. It's interesting what this particular rider did on his skidoo is he added these little wings on the side. This is the same thing that's on a trail snowmobile, and what it does is it keeps the air directly off his hands. Every rider has a different feel of that. That's what this rider chose to do, and again, when it's 21 below, keeping warm is huge. One of the most important segments on a snowmobile is the snowmobile suspension. One of the Christian Brothers sleds right here, this, this shock set up here from Fox is just one of the great suspension setups that are a must have in cross country racing. The reason why it's so finicky here is because when you're running down a road ditch it speeds upwards of 100 miles an hour. These are crucial in your setup of your sled. These snowmobiles and their drivers spend hours and hours of time testing and making sure it's the right combination and they're always looking for that extra edge. The rider who has the best shock setup most likely is the guy you'll see out in front, the 500. When riders bring their snowmobiles up to staging, they're bringing the covers out and the reason why, believe it or not, is they're trying to keep their sleds warm. These snowmobiles are running a mixture, a lot of them, of race fuel and normal fuel. And the problem is at cold temperatures, the snowmobiles don't like to start. So that's why you see covers on their sleds. And obviously, they do, uh, they do want to keep them under wraps, so to speak. It does keep them warm a little bit, so they have a better start. Drivers in the driver's meeting, what they're doing right now is Pat Mock, the uh, president of the USCC, is spending a few minutes with the drivers to let them know of any course changes, things to be aware of, such as extra stop signs, anything that may have happened overnight on the course. He's going to give them an update right now and a status on when the race will green flag start this morning. This is important. They do it every day, and it's just to kind of bring Pat a little closer to the racers and let them know if there's any issues that are developing overnight. One thing you'll notice about today, when you race the I-500, the biggest uncertainty is always the weather conditions. Yesterday, blistering cold, below 20, 20 below zero. Today is the same kind of cold temperature, but the biggest thing today is, look up, it's the blue sky. Blue sky is a racer's best friend. Yesterday there were a lot of pros that were a little tentative because of the snow dust, real flat light condition, and it's very dangerous in cross country racing, and it always has been. This 39th running of the I-500 is no different than one ran 39 years ago. You need blue sky to run fast, and we've got blue sky in Thief River Falls today. 
before the race starts every day at the I-500 or in any cross-country race by the USCC, the courses are always pre-road by USCC officials to make sure nothing happens overnight. We're waiting for the all-clear on the course. Once we get that, riders are going to go with their sleds and we're going to get underway racing day two at the Red Lake I-500. Don't forget, you too could be a part of riding snowmobiles in sub-zero temperatures like this weekend at the Red Lake I-500. <laughs>the fuel stop in Warren. What you're looking at is riders that are completing their first round of 60 miles. They came from the casino to Warren. They're stopping here to get fuel. You're going to see the guys right here. These two riders here, they've got two fuel cans. They're going to make sure their sleds are completely topped off and they're going to leave here, make a 60 mile loop back to here, fuel up again for the run into back to the casino.
I'm with Zach Mason's dad, Rob. Rob, how'd the first fuel stop go, bud? First fuel stop went great. We got a great team from Goodwin Performance and Skidoo here. They did a whoa, whoa, whoa. nice work there, bud. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yep. I was uh, Zach went out 67 today, so we had guys ahead of us taking care of everything. Everything worked great. We got two other guys on the team that came through early. They're running strong. The whole Skidoo team's working great. Now here's the big question: You didn't spill any fuel, did you, Gas Man? We did spill a little. We had to wipe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we'll catch up with you here in a little bit. He'll be coming back through. Just so everybody understands when you're watching, on the on this side over here, this is the first fuel lane. We're actually standing in the second fuel lane. Zach is out on his second loop here now. So he'll be back in here probably 40 minutes. Yep, 40 minutes. So good luck, bud. Thank you. you bet.